found in the book of Numbers at chapter number 6. Numbers at chapter 6. Verses 22 through verse 27. Numbers at chapter number 6, commencing in verse 22, reads, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I want to talk to us tonight from this subject. Don't leave before the benediction. Don't, 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 don't be in a hurry to leave before the benediction. It is quite possible to walk out on your blessing. People are in a hurry to leave church. Nobody's in a hurry to leave a concert. They, they got to flick the lights on and off at the club. <laughs> Nobody's ready to leave a football game. But we're always in a hurry to leave church. We rush out before the benediction. But I want to warn somebody tonight. I want to help us tonight not to walk out on your blessing. Not to leave before the benediction. Because it's quite possible to walk out on a blessing. Art Linkletter, you have to be of a certain age to know who Art Linkletter was. Art Linkletter had a show on CBS for some 25 years and then he went to NBC for another 19 years. And Art Linkletter, you will remember, had this segment on his show of children say the darndest things. But Art Linkletter was approached by Walt Disney to ask him to join him in a venture called Disney World. Art Linkletter thought it was the stupidest idea he ever heard. Walt Disney went on to found Disneyland and Disney World, a multi-billion dollar corporation. Mickey Mouse and Goofy, Minnie Mouse, and Art Linkletter thought it was the stupidest idea he had ever heard. And he went to his grave, disgruntled and upset, because he walked out on his blessing. <laughs> Pastor Williams and I have a friend named Anthony Allen. We are together with Anthony two or three, four times a week. And Anthony is a computer programmer never went to school, never was trained to do it. Anthony just, just knows how to program computers. And years ago, Anthony was approached by Michael Dell, who started a computer company in his garage. And Anthony said, I'm not gonna leave what I'm doing 
to go fool with no Michael Dell in a garage. Every day Anthony wakes up. He can kick himself because he said that was the stupidest idea he had ever heard. And everybody who started off with Michael Dell retired at 36 years old, multi-millionaires, and here Anthony is sitting with me and TR three or four times a week. It's very possible to walk out on your blessing. In fractal geometry, fractal geometry, there is a complex set of numbers that produces an infinite and intricate shape when platted on a geometric plane. It's called a Mandelbrot set in fractal geometry, which I know absolutely nothing about. It just so happens to have something to do with what I'm talking about tonight. In fractal geometry, there is this infinite, intricate pattern of numbers that can be platted on a geometric plane called a Mandelbrot set. Uh, it, it, it purports that um, any detail can be magnified uh, to an infinite detail ad infinitum. Uh, any detail can be magnified to reveal even more detail over and over and over again ad infinitum. Uh, the Mandelbrot set. Uh, fractal geometry, which I know nothing about, says that numbers can be added to an astronomical amount beyond what we can understand. The blessings of God are a Mandelbrot set. Uh, the blessings of God, new faith, are not one size fits all. Uh, each blessing is custom fitted for our particular complexity and personality. Every one of us here tonight has a Mandelbrot set of blessings that God blesses each one of us individually every single day with blessings that go on into infinity and they will never repeat one time. Let me see if I can make that make sense. Um, every time we sing the song, Great is Thy Faithfulness, that song comes from the book of Lamentations, written by Jeremiah. The Lamentation says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness towards us. That word new in the Lamentations does not mean new like new and then new and then new over and over again repeating itself. It means new like different in a way that it wasn't yesterday. The mercy I need today will not do for the mercy I need tomorrow. So when I wake up in the morning, God has to give me brand new mercy. This, 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 might, this might take a minute and this might seem unorthodox and foolish to you. But, but if you have your cell phone with you, would you take it out just for just a minute? I, I know you got it. I know you got it. Uh, take your cell phone out and turn it on and then get to the calendar and turn it off immediately because I don't want it ringing while I'm preaching. But, but get your phone out and, and, and go to your calendar. Not, not the calendar. Your, go to your calculator on your phone. Get to your calculator on your phone. You got it? Now multiply 365 times your age. You got it? Now I've done it for myself. And God has been blessing me 21,900 days different every day. You still got your number? 
Now I want you to shout with me in just a minute. I'm going to count to three. And I want you to thank God for how many days he's blessed you with a different blessing. You ready? One, two, three. Thank you for 21,900 days. New mercy. New grace. New power. New strength. New joy. Every single day. Great is your faithfulness towards us. I want you to hear me. The centerpiece of this ironic blessing is the Hebrew word Barak. The word blessing in the text means Barak in the Hebrew. Uh, if, if, if we put that word under a linguistic microscope, uh, we will find the intrinsic value of what it means to stay at church until the benediction. Uh, you, you won't be so fast to get up and leave when you know what it means to hear the ironic priestly blessing that is given to every child of God that is not formulaic in expression but it is right out of the mouth of God. God says to Moses, tell Aaron, here is what how, how I want him to bless my people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I want you to hear me tonight, brothers and sisters. You don't want to leave church no time until God barracks you. Uh, here it is. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless you. That, 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 that word means the Lord salute you. It's a, it's, a, it's a medieval way of revealing your identity. Uh, when, when someone tips their hat in salute to you, they are revealing themselves. They are lifting up their, their hat or their, their cap or, or their helmet so that you can see their face. And when God blesses you, he's lifting up his covering. He's lifting up his hat. He's lifting up his, his cap to reveal himself to you. Now, now here is how it's powerful. A salute, militarily speaking, a subordinate always salutes a superior. A private always salutes a sergeant. A colonel always salutes a general. But in the text, the Lord bless you. God is saluting you. A superior is lowering himself to salute a subordinate. God himself is revealing himself, tipping his hat, letting you see him for who he is. And if you leave before the benediction, you miss God revealing himself to you. God wants to salute you. God wants to make sure that before you leave this church tonight, you see him. I, I, I hope you didn't come here to see anybody but God. Uh, I hope you didn't come here to look at anybody, to, 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 to network, to try to find out what's going on and the latest gossip. And I hope you're not worrying about likes on Facebook and, and who likes you and who does not like you. Because perhaps you think if you get enough likes, you might maybe start liking yourself. But God loves you so much that every time you come to church and he sees you he wants you to see him so he raises up his hat he salutes you he flips his head and says the Lord bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you and then you want the Lord 
to keep you. That's another expression of Barak. Not only does God salute us in the benediction, but that word the Lord keep you means the Lord kneels down. The Lord kneels down. Uh, I, I had uh, Noel with me, my little grandbaby, when she was about four or five years old, when, when Toys R Us was open. And uh, we would go there every, every other day. Because grandparents have no sense. Uh, uh, she and I would go to Tars or else every day. She was about four or five years old. And she said, Granddaddy, I'm not going to spend all your little money. I said, well, I sure appreciate that. We'd go down and get everything she wanted, put it all in the bag, in the box. And one day I just decided I was going to wear her out. I was going to make her so tired she didn't want to go to Tars or Us ever again. And so she was so tired, she said, Granddad, I'm ready to go. I said, no, we got to get two or three more items. She said, Granddad, I'm ready to go. I said, no, girl, we got to stay here and get some more stuff. She said, Granddad, I want to go home. L-C-R-T-L, home. <laughs> Somebody going to get that on the way home. And so she kept on telling me she's ready to go. Then she started crying and got fussy. And then I got down on my knees where she was. And I tried to comfort her. But for the first time, I saw the world from her perspective. Everything was taller than her. Everything was bigger than her. And in order for me to understand her, I had to kneel down. In order for me to sympathize with her, I had to get on her level. Somebody ought to help me preach it tonight. God in the Old Testament was incomprehensible. So he had to come in the New Testament and kneel down and get on our level. And for God to get down on your level means that we have a high priest who can sympathize with us. We have a God who can understand us. We have a God who loves us so much that he kneels down to where we are to bless us. Uh, brothers and sisters, don't be, hurry, don't be in a hurry to leave church with a God who wants to kneel down next to you. Don't, don't be so quick to get away from church. God wants to get in your shoes. God wants to sit in your pew. God wants to give you what you cannot get unless he comes alongside you and kneel down. I think the reason many of us can't give God glory it's because we way up here and God is trying to bring us down here. I think whenever you come in the Lord's presence, you ought to check your ego at the door. You, you ought to put your supposed importance in the car. Because God's been so good to us that because he woke you up this morning, don't mean you're going to wake up tomorrow morning. And then you woke up this morning and you were able to get up. There were some people who woke up who could not get up. And then not only did you wake up and get up, but you're in your right mind. You know where you are. You can feed and dress yourself. That's God kneeling down. That's God saluting you. That's God coming down to your level to say, I know you don't deserve it, but I'm going to do it anyway. I know you're not worthy of it, but I'm going to wake you up one more time. And for that reason, you ought to not ever leave God's presence without thanking him for saluting you and kneeling down to you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you. I really want to get here. The Lord make his face to shine on you. Body language was real important, not only in, in the Hebrew religion, but, but in Akkadian and uh, Ugaritic Near Eastern cults and rituals, body language was very important. Particularly and especially if you were summoned into the presence of the king. 
His body language dictated what was going to happen to you. If you came in the king's presence and he did not look your way, you would be wise to leave. And if he turned his back on you, that was certain death. But God wants not only to salute you and kneel down, but God wants to make his face shine on you. Now, brothers and sisters, hear me. That word, make his face to shine on you, means literally to kiss you on the mouth. It's, it's, it's literally in the Hebrew, mouth to mouth resuscitation. For God to make his face shine on you is God to kiss you on the mouth. Mouth to mouth resuscitation. It's um, when, when God blew the breath of life into Adam in Genesis and Adam became a living soul. Whenever God wakes you up in the morning and kisses you on the mouth with a mouth to mouth resuscitation, he's giving you a second wind. And you ought not look that second wind ensconce at it. You ought, not, you ought not trifle with it because God kissed you on the mouth this morning and gave you a second wind. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. When I was pastoring my church at home, there was an old woman in our church named Katie Hill. Miss Katie was 99 years old. Beautiful black woman, charcoal black, beautiful white gray hair. Miss Katie was full of spunk. She was lively at 99 years old. When she turned 100, we had President Reagan to call her uh, on the phone. And he called her and we put it on a loudspeaker at the church. And he wished her a happy birthday. And we had a parade uh, in Eunice for Miss Katie when she turned 100. But at 99 years old, uh, Miss Katie Hill uh, my birthday is in June. She walked two and a half miles from her house to bring me a birthday gift. I said, Miss Katie, you didn't have to do that. You could have called me. I would have gone to your house to get it. She said, if I wanted you to come get it, I'd have called you. <laughs> she said, I wanted to come and bring it to you because I want you to know how much I love you. Uh, every Sunday morning, Miss Katie would not let me leave that church until she kissed me on the mouth. She'd kiss me on the lips every Sunday morning. Miss Katie had a daughter named Helen who was a registered nurse. Miss Helen worked at the hospital, and I could tell when Miss Helen was at work and Miss Katie had to dress herself. She'd put on all her rings. You know how old folk put on all their jewelry. She had all her pearls, all her beads. Every, every piece of jewelry she owned, she had it on. And she bathed herself in Estee Lauder perfume. I could tell when Miss Helen had to work because Miss Katie, you could smell her coming down the street of Estee Lauder perfume. Every necklace, every ring, every bobble, every bead, she had it on and she would not let me leave that church until she kissed me on the lips, smelling of Estee Lauder perfume. One day my wife had to work and she wasn't able to be at church. And after church was over, I went back home. She said, you've been hugging Miss Katie, ain't you? I said, how you know? She said, you smell like Estee Lauder perfume. Can I help somebody here tonight? When you let God bless you, when you let God kiss you on the mouth, when you leave New Faith Church, somebody ought to say, you've been to church, ain't you? You smell like Jesus. You look like Jesus. You sound like Jesus. Have I got a witness here tonight? When you come to church, don't ever leave church until God kisses you on the mouth with mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to let you know he didn't have to let you live. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. 
That word, be gracious unto you, means to speak words of excellence about somebody. It's, it's, it's eulogia, eulogy. It means to eulogize, to speak well of, to speak kindly of. And somebody here tonight hadn't had a kind word spoken about you all the week long. You've been beaten and buffeted, pushed and knocked down. The devil has made you feel less than. Maybe somebody told you you were nobody or nobody told you you were somebody. And for that reason, you are going through life smiling to keep from crying. There's a pain and a, a suffering that you go through because you have heard negative stuff all your life. Somebody said how stupid you were and how you'll never become anything. You'll never be anybody. You'll never make it. And somebody's always putting you down. Somebody's always trying to make you feel less than what God created you to be. Because if you don't know who you are, people will tell you who they think you are. And who they think you are is always lower than God's definition of you. I mentioned this to our church often, that um, when, when I was growing up, my father never understood me the whole while I was growing up as a child, uh, because he, he, I heard him say to my mother one time, we're going to have to take care of this boy the rest of his life. <laughs> he's not going to ever be anything. He's lazy. He's not going to ever, he's not, he, he, we just going to have to just make up our mind. To take care of this boy the rest of his life. He's he just, he just so lazy, it's ridiculous. And, and, and 92% of that, well, 97% of that, well, 100% of that was absolutely true. I was, I was but, but I had an affinity for books, uh, for learning, for, for words. And uh, all my other brothers were athletes. They all had letters on their jackets. And they had all the girls' phone numbers. And they were all handsome and strapping and strong. And all over the town, everybody wanted to see them play football and basketball. And they could swim and run track. And I don't wear short pants because my legs look like they're on the wrong side. I'm not athletic, I'm not, I'm not well built, I'm not constructed like them. All of them were handsome and strong and strapping and they led it in sports and they played football and basketball and ran track and swam and, and I couldn't do anything but be a cheerleader. I'd go out there and holler for them and clap for them, but I couldn't do anything like that. I couldn't work with my hands. I was not coordinated. I'm still not core. I can't chew gum and, and walk at the same time. And all of them were strong and strapping with numbers, girls' numbers and, and, and letters on their jackets. And uh, my father never understood me because he thought I'd never make it because I was not like my brothers were. And he, I heard him tell my mother, that boy ain't going to make it. We're going to have to take care of him the rest of his life. But I had an affinity for books, and I would walk around with dictionaries and encyclopedias reading, not knowing that God would use me for the rest of my life with words. My father never understood that until I started preaching. And then when I, when I, when I heard him say that to my mother, my mother could tell how crestfallen I was how those words almost shattered me psychologically. My mother looked at me in the eyes and my father was standing right there and my mother said, don't listen to what that fool says. She said, a real man is not measured from his neck down. A real man is measured from his neck up. Don't, don't let your daddy make you feel less than your brothers because you are not athletic and you don't do what they do. He doesn't know what God wants to do with your life. You just keep on doing what you're doing. And now all my brothers are all full of arthritis and they all <laughs> knees all bad and they can't walk. They tore up from the floor up and, and I go back home and all the girls who didn't want me because I wasn't athletic and they, oh, Terry, you look so good. And I say, back then you didn't want me. 
Now I'm hot, you all on me. Y'all know that song. Come on, hit me sing. But 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 sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That's not true. Words hurt. And somebody here tonight needs to be encouraged. And maybe there's somebody next to you needs to be encouraged. And nobody perhaps will ever say anything to you the whole while you are in church. But I've got somebody who's got something to say to you tonight. You are more than a conqueror. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not beneath. God has a word for you tonight. And if you leave church before the benediction, you will miss out on God saying to you, I want to salute you. I want to bless you. I want to make my face shine on you and be gracious towards you. That word gracious is to speak of you kindly. And to say something that you need to hear at church that you're not going to hear at Jay-Z's concert. <laughs> Stop running after Kanye West and all of these people on television. Get off of Facebook and put your face in a book <laughs> and recognize that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Can you imagine I'm, I'm trying to rush, but can you imagine that woman with that alabaster box who broke it open and poured it on Jesus and the disciples said we could have taken this perfume and sold it and given the money to the poor and Jesus said leave her alone. She's done a good thing. She's anointed me for my burial. Watch this. And everywhere the gospel is preached what she has done will be a memorial not to me but to her can you imagine how that woman felt with the issue of blood who grabbed jesus and and when she, when jesus stopped the blood stopped and jesus said somebody touched me and that little woman raised her hand jesus had her to stand up in front of him and say to her essentially there's no healing in this garment the garment just so happened to be on the healer can you imagine how that mother felt who was on the way to bury her only son, that widow of Nain, and Jesus put his hands on the casket and brought that boy back to life? Or that woman who was caught in the very act of adultery, Jesus told her, go and sin no more. There's somebody in here tonight who needs a good word spoken about you tonight. You need to pat your own self on the back and tell yourself that you are a child of God. Stop waiting for people to affirm you. Stop waiting for people to approve of you. Call your house phone with your cell phone and tell yourself how good you look. Take yourself to the movies. Take yourself out to dinner. You don't need no Negro to make you who you are. You can do bad by yourself. Spend your own money. Walk your own way. Be your own man. Your own, be comfortable in your own skin. God made you who you are. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And then the Lord lift up his countenance upon you that that means literally barack that means literally god wants to make peace with you and he wants you to be at peace be at peace this time of year thanksgiving christmas coming toward the end of the year people are so stressed out we, we just skip right over thanksgiving and go into decorating our home for Christmas and, and going online shopping Black Friday and Cyber Monday 
and getting in that traffic in the Galleria and trying to make sure that we got just the right gift for everybody because we, we, we want to make sure that everything goes right. And we are so stressed and so bothered that by the time the holiday comes, we're about to tear our hair out. We ain't looking forward to nobody coming to our house tomorrow. They don't know when to leave. Them bad cheering, jumping all on your furniture. They eating, dropping food all on your carpet. And in your mind, you're saying, come in. And in your heart, you're saying, get out of here. Can I help you with that? When, when you don't need other people's approval, when you don't need, when you're not addicted to likes, you're going to learn to appreciate what you have and give God praise for such things as you have. Because in order for you to get to that place and to talk like Paul, Paul said, I've learned. To learn means I must not have known it before, so I had to learn that in whatsoever state I find myself in, I know how to be content. Have I got a witness here? I know how to act when I'm up and when I'm down, when I'm broke and when I have money. I know how to abound, I know how to be a base. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I don't need anybody's company to make me feel whole. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to leave it alone, but I can't think of anybody's company I enjoy more than my own. I'm happy with Jesus alone. I'm satisfied the way God made me. I'm thankful for what God gave me. What I have, the Lord gave me. Where I am, God brought me. I don't, I don't have to be the best. I just have to do my best. It doesn't matter that I don't live in River Oaks. When I close my door, you don't know where I live. I don't know where I live. I'm sleeping. I don't know where I live. I'm grateful for everything that the Lord gives me. Somebody was worrying me the other day about who you're going to vote for in the election and who you think is going to win and what you think about the president. and what you. I said, I don't live in the United States. I live in my house. I don't live in Houston. I live in my house. Don't make no difference to me who the mayor is. It, it wouldn't make a difference if they woke me up in the morning. It would make a difference if they put food on my table. But, but I'm, my, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I, I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, because all other ground is sinking sand. I want the Lord to bless me and keep me and make his face to shine upon me. And then I want him to lift up his countenance upon me, to give me peace stop stop worrying about who likes you and who does not like you who's on your side who's not on your side uh, pastor lewis I've, I've 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 determined this in the last two or three years it would take me almost 40 years to get to this point but i've gotten to this point in my pastorate that i've just pastored the people who let me pastor them uh, I just pastor the folk who let me pastor them. I just preach to the people who let me preach to them. I, I quit worrying about folk who leave my church to go join another church because they weren't my members in the first place. Because if they were my members, they would still be at Lily Grove Church. I, I just had them for a season. I just, I, just, I just prepared them to go be nothing at somebody else's church. Uh, uh, because because they wasn't doing nothing at my place. And so I don't imagine they're going to be too much when they go someplace else. So I was just warming them up to go be nothing at somebody else's church. So I don't, I don't, I don't concern myself with that. I thank God for the people who let me pastor them. I'm grateful for the people that God lets me preach to. And here's my surprise. I'm surprised that anybody shows up on Sunday morning. Because if you knew who I really was, 
how low down I really am, but God still chooses to use me. I have this treasure in an earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of Terry Anderson. You would be shocked to know that God uses some of the people that God uses right here at New Faith because when you think about all the stuff you did that God should have cut you off, the Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. This last word, here it is. And give you peace. Cause you to prosper. Cause you to prosper. All of that is in that blessing. God wants all of that to happen to you before you leave church. And if you leave before the benediction, you miss out on all of that. God wants you to prosper. I'm not talking about prosperity gospel now or, or name it and claim it. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about God wants to increase your level of living uh, so he can increase your level of giving. See how quiet you got right there? He wants to increase your level of living so he can increase your level of giving. God wants you to prosper. I want to say a word to somebody before I take my seat. Stop letting people make you apologize for being blessed. Stop being bashful and shy about wearing your diamonds and your gold and your pearls and your jewels and your nice clothes because you don't want anybody to feel bad. Stop, stop, stop parking your good car in the garage and riding around in your little Chevrolet because you don't want to be, you know, want people to think you're showing off. You're not doing that. You're just being blessed. And when God prospers you, he doesn't prosper you, prosper you for you to hide it in a corner. He wants you to show it off and let people know if God did it for me, he can do it for you. If God did it before, he can do it again. And when you are responsible with your money and pay your tithes and bless the Lord's church, God will prosper you and you ought not let anybody who's not a tither make you feel bad for being blessed. Uh, stop letting people dictate to you how you praise God. How you give God glory. Because God has prospered you. Here it is. I'm through. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor standeth in the way of sinners. Nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. You'll help me close this, won't you? And in that law doth he meditate both day and night. And? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth fruit in its season. His leaf also shall not wither and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. But the ungodly are not so. They are like the chaff that the wind driveth away. That's not enough for you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Come on, you can help me say it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, in the presence of my enemies thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever 
That's not enough for you? The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. Though a host should encamp against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. Here it is. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me. I wish I had one or two more witnesses. That's not enough for you. I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer even my foot to be moved. Behold, he that keepeth thee shall not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is the shade upon my right hand. The sun shall not smite me by day, nor the moon by night. For the Lord shall preserve me from all evil. He shall preserve my soul. He shall preserve my going out and my coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. You want one more? Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let me place a caveat there. If you're not going to magnify him with me, I don't mind magnifying him by myself. He's opened doors for me. He's made a way for me. He's answered my prayers. He's dried my tears. He picked me up, turned me around, placed my feet on solid ground. Is there anybody here glad tonight that the Lord blessed you? Glad tonight that the Lord kept you? Glad tonight that he made his face shine on you? Glad tonight that he lifted up his countenance upon you. Glad tonight that he gave you peace. If the Lord opened doors for you, come on, help me praise his name. If the Lord made a way for you, help me tell God, thank you. If the Lord brought you out, and you're not ashamed to testify why don't you grab somebody shake somebody's hand tell them if it had not been if it had not been if it had not been for the lord who was on my side is there anybody here no god is on your side tell him thank you thank you Thank you, thank you. I wish I had a witness here. Thank you, Jesus. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. The economy is down. People can't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say, thank you. Thank you, folks without homes, living out in the street. The drug habits, some say, they just can't beat. 
Murders and robbers no place seemed to be safe but you've been my protection every step of the way thank you thank you thank you it could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all left alone without a friend just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be every day by your power every day by your power you keep on keeping me thank you thank you thank you I know you like Jesus can't nobody do me like the Lord this day November 27th I've been preaching 42 years I've been up sometimes down sometimes sick sometimes almost died one time but here I am tonight saying thank you thank you Thank you, thank you, I know he's all right.